first and foremost, physically, mentally, emotionally, now that some time has passed since the Sterling fight, how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling good. I just, uh, I just know that, you know, even after my fight, I felt like I was going to, you know, if, if I in first time last, you know, I'm, I'm not doing this just to fight. I'm doing this to be the best in the world. And if I can't be the best in the world and I don't want none of the cake, even though it was a split decision call, it's just, it's just confusion, you know, but at, the next day after waking up, I'm just thinking, this is the best guy that you guys have, and 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 I knew the mistakes that I made and the adjustments. If I can get, you know, one more fight before I fight this guy again, I says I'm gonna take my chances. So there's there's a chip in my shoulder now, Sandu, and it's uh, it's just it's 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 dangerous for me to have that because man, I don't like be behind nobody, and I feel like now, you know, even if it was a close fight, like whatever it is, like a loss is a loss, whether I think I won or not, or whether people think I won or not. If the judges score it different, then you got to go with the people who are who've been equipped to score a fight the way they have to score it. I'm just I'm still tripping on on round five, but I also do know that some of the other rounds were pretty close, and I know they could have gone either way. Well, so we're gonna get we're gonna get to all of that. Said, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna get to the scorecards and everything. But prior to the fight, what was the kind of game plan going into the fight? What were you hoping to achieve with five rounds against Sterling? Um, it was control the distance, uh, but at the same time, I also knew that if he was going to be rangy and a little tricky, that I was going to do kind of Mexican style, bring the pressure. Um, but I don't, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm not too happy about my performance. I don't even want to give the game plan away because I don't even think I did the, even the game plan. Mm. You know, uh, I just pretty much had to fight the way I typically don't fight. But I had, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and. It was the best that I could give. What is it? The best of me? No, but it was the best that I could give at that time. And it's the same reason why it just doesn't sit well with me. Mm. You know, uh, a lot of mistakes that I made, a lot of adjustments that I should have made that I didn't make. Uh, the only the only time that I really kind of pat myself in the back was just the fifth round of being able to kind of pull that through, knowing that the rest of the rounds were kind of close. Um. You know, the fifth was, I mean, the fourth was definitely his. But I just don't know. I did it. This is actually my first interview, so you're getting the best. You're going to get the best of me here because I'm just, I'm an open book. And I appreciate that. One thing I want to ask before we kind of get into the scorecards and the rounds, did you feel any cage rust with the long layoff coming into this fight? And did you even feel anything during the fight? Um, the, the rust... It, it was more of the inexperience, you know what I'm saying? Like physically, I felt physically, I felt good. The inexperience of being able to steal rounds, kind of some of the things that Al Germain did that I didn't do. That's the stuff that kind of bothers me. So it wasn't so much of the cage rush. It was more of forgetting the inexperienced thing or the experiences that I used to do that I didn't do, you know? And, uh, and that's, that's kind of where I fall out now, you know? Right. You've brought up the scorecards a few times. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through it. Round one, 10-9, 10-9, 10-9 to Sterling. Unanimous with all three judges. Round two, 10-9 Cejudo, 10-9 Cejudo, 10-9 Sterling. Right. Then we go into round three, 10-9, 10-9, 10-9, all for Cejudo. That's unanimous. Round four, 10-9, 10-9, 10-9, 10-9, all unanimous for Sterling. And then round five, 10-9, Cejudo, 10-9, Sterling, 10-9, Cejudo. And so there are two rounds here where the judges didn't unanimously agree with each other. Round two, Eric Colon scored it 10-9 for Sterling. The other two judges scored it in your favor. And then round five, we had Derek clearly give it to Sterling 10-9. And that seems to be the one where it feels like it was one of the easier rounds to score that fifth round in your favor and had clearly just given you that round. We're looking at a completely different result here. Would you agree with that? Uh, of course, 100 percent. But I, I almost feel like the second round was uh, the first, the second and fifth were like my best rounds, I believe. Mm. I've only watched the fight one time. But it's also it's also a hard fight to judge when it's super competitive, it's super close. 
you know. But I mean, I, I just think like Derek Cleary, uh, he was a judge that had stiffed me once before with uh, Joseph Benavides. So I just don't know. I just don't know where that shit comes from. You know, if there's any, if there's any round that was pretty decisive, I believe the whole world would 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 agree. It was that fifth round. So I don't know what I did. I don't know what is it. I don't know if he likes the persona or whatever, but I don't know. Whatever it is, man, he didn't give me that round. I just thought it was uh, a bit unjust. I think if there are closer rounds, it was from, from one of four, you know, but to not give me the fifth is like, it's, it's a little crazy. And the, th the thing is, the thing is, Sandu, it's like, I'm not bitter, man. I'm not bitter because I know the potential that I could, that, that I could take it. I know what I, could have done and I didn't do that. Uh, that's more of what bothers me. Mm. You know, it's not so much the loss, but being able to give more of your best tactically, technically, and be able to do it rather than just win by a thread. Like I don't, I don't like that. You know. Yeah, there was a great video on your YouTube channel where you basically, I think, later on that night, rewatched the fight. Um. When you were rewatching it, and now that you've had some time to kind of think on it and stew on it, can you see the the areas and and the moments in the fight that perhaps you could have done a little bit more to to decisively, you know, get maybe some of those rounds that the judges perhaps favored St Sterling in? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, and particularly it was really round one. I was winning round one until I decided to uh, to kind of relax a little bit and then get taken down by the cage. I mean, he stole that round, you know. I was, I mean, that's one round that really, that kind of kind of started pushing the pace of the fight. And, you know, Algerman started getting a little more comfortable. Because Algerman, Algerman's really good with his wrestling off against the cage. But when it comes to just pure wrestling, like off the open, like he had nothing. And I, well, we knew that. Um, but we have to give credit where credit is due. And that's, that's an area that I feel that we're really going to focus in on and hone in now. And hone in on whenever it is the fight with Marab's going to take place. And I can't wait to speak to you about that. But the verdict scorecard, I don't know if you were familiar with verdict and the global scorecard. Again, I know this is not the official judges, but when you start to kind of build up an evidence kit and you start to make a case study in terms of why a lot of people thought you won this fight, the verdict users gave you rounds two, three, and five very unanimously. Um, and so I don't know. If that's any consolation, it feels like the fans and the people watching at home kind of thought you won that fight. Uh, yeah, yeah, could have, should have, and would have, but yeah, I think I think Burdick is uh, it just puts it in perspective, man. You know what I mean? It's like it's like the scientific evidence of probability, and uh, you know that's one thing that you know Captain Captain Eric he he always kind of brought up was like, hey, dude, look, this is this is what the card is. But obviously, being there live and even watching on TV, even being even fighting there live and actually watching on TV, if you're there live, like that, even feels more of a of an actual real situation because you're able to see the fight, you're able to hear the blows, you're able to kind of feel and engage a little bit more than you would actually on TV. So there's a lot to learn from uh, from that. But I mean, I appreciate it from Burdick, but at the end of the day, I'm. You know, I'm here with that about <laughs> when, you know, but I, but I know, I know that there's a lot of work to do and I'm excited to go back to the gym and start pinpointing some of that stuff because it's stuff that I already know, but obviously I have to do it when, 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 you know, when the time really comes. When Bruce is announcing the results and the referee has both your hands did you feel confident enough in that moment that your hand was about to get raised in victory? Mm. When I fought Demetrius, I felt like I I felt I when I fought, when I fought Demetrius, I was confident that it was there. When, when, when with this one, I was just like I was a little more pissed off knowing that I, knowing that there are things that I could have adjusted it did right. You know, so I, I don't know. I was a little eerie. I was a kind. Of, I was a bit up in the air. You know, because I did, I, I because I did end, uh, very good. Also, the second, I mean, the just the rest of the rounds were kind of a, a question mark to me, quite honestly, and that's just the honest truth. Sure. And I'm pretty sure Sterling will probably say the same thing, and that's kind of where I land. So the so the answer is, I just didn't know. I really mm -hmm. didn't know. 
after the result was read, there was a moment where you've got Dana White there helping you get your gloves off. And, in, and watching it live in the moment, I think me and everyone else thought, oh, is Henry about to retire? Was there a moment in your mind where you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to call it time right now? Or what were you thinking in that moment? Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, this is it for me. This is it for me because I don't, I don't fight. I don't, I don't want to be the second best or the third best to the fourth best. I don't want to be a top 10 fighter. I don't. I'm not in this game to fight everybody to get back to the title to the to, you know to the title once again. That's just that's just not me. I'm too competitive. I'm too I'm too greedy. And uh you know I, but but the, but there's still a question mark of like how good how good could I still get? You know, and uh I've been here before, Sandy like I over the 2007 being 31st in the world to winning the Olympics the whole next year, 365 days, 365 days later, I was the Olympic champ. When I got knocked out by Demetrius, and I had to wait two and a half years to fight the man again, to be able to get a victory over him. So I just feel like my story with a lot of stuff that has happened, um, I don't know, man. I, I, I get like what's made me, what's made me me was maybe the triple C has always been the comebacks. So I'm also excited to see where is it that I could take my mind, body, and soul and uh, and come back and, and retain this belt once again. Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. Hey, do me a favor, hit the like button, drop a comment, let me know what you think, share this with your friends. And if you really enjoyed it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I have a lot more amazing content planned. So jump along for the ride.